Hello whiskey folk, this is Mark, your host here at Whiskey Whistle, bringing you whiskey review number 61. Today we're going to be looking at a blend, a blended scotch whiskey. This one needs no introduction and it is called Ballantines. Why have I waited this long? Well, um, I cannot do everything all at once, but I probably should have, should have done this earlier. Anyway, let's get it done now, shall we? This one is the 17-year-old Blended Scotch Whiskey Ballantines. I've got a little sample here. Sorry that's not a full-size bottle, but you know what? I found that and I thought, boy, um, if I just get this little one, I can do a nice review just with that. And this was about $15,001, $15 for that little guy. And uh, well, uh, it's going to help me a lot, isn't it? So let's just get that opened. I've never tried this before. I've tried the 12 year old. That was quite nice. Let's get that cracked. There we are. And we will get it poured into my Kilt Lifters, uh, Kilt Lifters Scotch Club uh, Glen Cairn glass. There it is. I think that's enough. Oh, yes. I mean, a little bit for a rainy day and in fact it's raining today so there we have it Valentine 17 year old this is 43% ABV and it smells uh, uh, from the first smell it smells a lot older than it actually says on the label We'll talk about why, but we're going to let that sit for a little while while we talk about Valentine's and the history of it, okay? By the way, I'm a little bit stuffed up all of a sudden, so if, uh, <clears throat> if I suddenly cough like that, I do apologize. Um, so let's just carry forward. Valentine's, 17-year-old, okay? Where is my history? There it is. Okay, well, 43% ABV. This one is owned by Pernod Ricard, and we should talk about that. But let's talk about the history. On the label here, you will see somewhere, where, where, where? Oh yes, established 1827. It's very small in this little bottle, but it's right below the, uh, the, uh, the what is that called? The coat of arms. Okay, what does it say here, by the way? Ballantine's the original blended Scotch whiskey, fully matured, finest quality. Established 1827, aged 17 years. Okay. Uh, anyway, so 17 year old. Uh, 1827 was when the store, okay, the uh, kind of a general store opened in 1827. Uh, 1865 is when, uh, roughly when, uh, the blending of whiskey started, uh, started, okay? And, um, to make Ballantine's 17-year-old, well, Ballantine's in general, 50 malts are used. So, 50 single malts, uh, so 50 different distilleries worth of single malts, as well as four grain distillery whiskeys. Okay, so 50 malts and 4 grains. And uh, most of all, um, these two distilleries, Milton Duff and Glen Berge, are noted particularly for lending the flavor that provides, uh, makes the flavor of Ballantines. Okay. Now, um, for Scotch whiskey, this is number two, the second most selling, the second highest volume selling Scotch whiskey in the world. I will not mention number one. And interestingly enough, there's a Canadian link. What is that? 1937, uh, Hiram Walker, Gooderham and Warts, they bought Ballantines, in fact. And interestingly, the Canadian owners decided to go ahead and build a new grain distillery called uh, Dumbarton. Uh, and that was apparently the largest in Europe at the time. And interestingly enough, uh, Ballantines is not exactly hugely popular in its home country. 
it is hugely popular here in South Korea. And that brings me to my next point, the Korean link. Well, for Korea, blends are king. And for blends, Valentine's blended scotch whiskey is far and away the biggest seller here in Korea. So everybody knows Valentine's. Uh, that word is as common as any other brand, uh, be it Coca-Cola or you name it. Uh, anyone over the age of about 20 has heard of Valentine's possibly even as young as 15. Don't want to say why. Okay, and what else? Um, the 17, 21, and 30-year-olds are quite popular here. Anything else? 2002, the Dumbarton Distillery, the green distillery, was mothballed. Mothballed meaning it was, it was closed, not dismantled. It, it still sits there, I hope. And the grain, uh, the, the bulk of the grain shifted to the Strathclyde Distillery in Glasgow. And uh, the person who is responsible for maintaining the flavor profile uh, of Ballantyne's blended scotch whiskey, uh, his name is Sandy Hislop. And you can see him rolling through. There he is, nosing a glass of Glenburgie, I believe, inspecting the color and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's get that smelled, shall we? Okay, let's have a very, very short advertisement right here. Welcome back, let's talk about the scents that are in this glass. What do I smell? Well, I smell old books. I smell some spice. A little bit of peat. This peat though, it's different. Classic leather notes that are usually associated with older whiskeys. So old books and leather. Hmm. A green whiskey. It's not so easy to pick out here, which is interesting. If you pick up a bottle of um, some basics, uh, like let's say, oh, I don't know, um, Johnny Walker Red Label, uh, the green note that um, that's sweet, what can I call it? It's kind of a bourbon type of a nose, but it's different. But anyway, uh, you'll find that grain note quite prevalent. And here it's very different. And that could be because uh, even the grain whiskey must be aged a minimum of 17 years. So that could be why. So I'm really liking what I'm smelling here. But honestly, this smells quite much, quite much, quite a lot like uh, 21 to 25 year old whiskeys. And in fact, there could be a significant amount of older whiskeys included. We don't know. But we do know that the youngest whiskey that goes into this bottle is 17 years old. Okay. All right, let's get that uh, tasted now. Cheers, everybody. Cheers to Sandy Hislop. It smells great to me. Let's taste it. Hmm. That is powerful. 43%. The flavor um, could be similar to something at 46 or even higher. It starts out smoky, a bit of sweetness, a touch of dryness as well. Let's try that again.
Well, definitely, uh, definitely some peat, uh, some wood charcoal. A little bit of gunpowder, which I mentioned before, but I'm tasting that again here. That could be indicative of something. I don't want to say what. But given there's 50, 50 individual single malts included, you never know what might be in there. We didn't talk about the color, by the way. That is pretty much the standard amber, maybe just slightly under. They're using a green bottle, so they don't really have to focus so much on the color of the whiskey. Okay, so that's pretty much gold. All right. very unusual and quite complex and I wish I had a bigger bottle so that I could really go to town with uh, the research and figure it out uh, all the flavors uh, that I can get from this. Hmm. Butterscotch. Really not much green going on there. And again, it could be just the fact that uh, the grain whiskey has been aged uh, for so long that it is really, really doing uh, nothing but kindness to this whiskey. Very vanilla forward. Um, so vanilla, butterscotch. Mm. Some spent espresso beans. And the finish is quite smoky, quite long. Bit of apple in there too. Hmm. Okay, let's try that with a touch of water. Not too much. Now I featured a lot of blends on my channel. I believe it might be as many as 10 uh, thus far. That many? Well, anyway, how does this compare? To be quite honest with you, um, this might be my favorite blended Scotch whiskey. The water really brings out the sweetness in the nose. And apple. Butterscotch is now coming through in the nose, too. Hmm. Classic vanilla notes. The peat is still there, which is very nice, in fact. Hmm. Maybe a little bit of um, ripe gooseberries. So gooseberries, when they ripen, they get a little bit of a rusty red color on one end. Hmm. We used to have a bush, a gooseberry bush, um, in my parents' first house when I was uh, quite young, up to the age, up to the age of about thirteen or fourteen. And my parents like to make gooseberry jam, but sometimes there were no gooseberries on the bush on certain years. Just like sometimes they planted carrots. And uh, for whatever reason, there would be no carrots uh, left to pick in the garden. I don't know who 
took all of those uh, lovely, delicious carrots. I thought I could see in the dark. I nearly could, I think. So many carrots. Okay. So we've added a bit of water. Let's taste that now, shall we? Hmm. Much softer, much sweeter. Hmm. Orange, general, generic citrus. Hold the phone, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. So with water, some citrus, some orange. Hint of a leathery note. The peat is so prominent, as is the gun the gunpowder. Hmm. Very unusual, this one. Quite lovely. I'm going to add just a shade more water in there. A couple of drops. The finish really does go quite a long way. And generally, it's the peat and that gunpowder note that's really carrying quite far. And there's a little backbone of uh, vanilla sweetness there carrying it through too. Let's see. Bit of a mild, not quite peppery note, but well, we'll leave it at that. Just slightly peppery with water added, which is quite interesting. May as well finish that off. Hmm. <clears throat> After you swallow, you really get a, a crescendo of strength there. Peppery, peaty. And then a bit of sweetness carries through. And then finally, that undercurrent of peat is what remains uh, as you carry on. And smack your lips and so on and so forth. So quite a long, long finish for that one. Well, um, of course, there's no, you know, this is the first time I've had uh, Valentine's 17. So pretty hard to really uh, give it a score in just, in just, uh, a just score. I may as well just do this now. Get that turned the right way. Oh, 
Well, that one's gone. Hmm. Such an unusual, just a very unusual whiskey altogether. Um, and in the greatest way that I can possibly say that it's unusual. Unusual in that you should try it. Unusual in that there are flavors there that I can't quite figure out what they are just yet. And I'm going to have to probably come back to this again. So there could be a re-review of Valentine's 17 year old, perhaps a larger bottle, uh, something that I can, uh, you know, take my time with and really, really get into it uh, to get all of the, the flavors that I can imagine um, uh, from it. Hmm. You know, a little bit of, um, a little bit of pine. Um, pine wood, but also pine needle, and a little bit of pine sap. And the sweetness is really coming through now, which is funny because I've opened it, but it could be just the oxidation that's occurring. Oxidation? Oxidize? Oxidization? <laughs> Whichever one it is, I don't know. Oh, boy. Hmm. Slightly appley. Let's be generous with the water and just see if there's any difference. interesting the finish here I'm serious it really you swallow it and you get this really big crescendo of flavor and then it trails off hmm. mint too. So pine, peat, mint, oranges, a little bit of apple, leather, old books. All of this comes through quite nicely. Okay, so the Whiskey Whistle score for this one is going to be 90 out of 100. 90 out of 100 for Ballantine's 17-year-old blended Scotch whiskey. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I hope you'll tune in next time. I've got to run. Take care now.